Now before I tell you about this trombone and what it is that makes it so special, I want to share with you about a very exciting email that I received recently. Now as you'll clearly be able to see, I am one of the biggest faces on YouTube, uh, literally if not figuratively, but up until recently that hasn't really paid off. Well that was up until I received an email from Skillshare who were interested in sponsoring a video from me if I would include a little segment where I tell you about their platform. So I'm going to do that just briefly. Skillshare's website is a fantastic place where you can go to take easy to follow online classes covering a huge variety of topics such as things that interest me personally and that I'm very passionate about like uh, yoga and vegan cuisine. Two things that I'm just not really personally interested in like music and the like. There are literally thousands of classes on there, so whether you are wanting to improve at something you can already do or learn a new skill, there will definitely be, there, be something there for you. I'm personally taking a few classes to help brush up on my Adobe Premiere skills, the software that I use to edit these videos. Uh, there's a great one there from a guy called Jordi Vanderput from Belgium, uh, which is a fantastic introduction to uh, editing videos with Adobe Premiere. Now to help you get started, the first 1,000 of you who click in the link in the video description will get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your own creativity or just see what it's all about. A big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this segment. Today I'm going to share with you one of the most unusual trombones in my collection and one of the most unusual trombones I have ever seen in the flesh. And it is this. This is a Hawks and Son Excelsius Sonoris uh, Class A trombone from 1906. And what makes it particularly unusual is the existence of a single piston valve right here. This is called a trill valve. The trill valve lowers the pitch you are playing by a semitone when you press the valve. So it's the same sort of concept as an F attachment, it's just instead of changing the pitch by a perfect fourth, you change it by a minor second. The general concept behind this trombone with the trill valve and the con trombone that had the same sort of arrangement um, made from the United States of America land was that you would be able to negotiate ornaments and elements to your music which would be too difficult to play with a normal trombone. These days we've got trombone slides that are feather light and very responsive and with the skill of most players with lip trills and, and alternate positions and so forth, I haven't really ever wanted something like this. You can still get them for modern E flat alto trombones but I've not really seen any mainstream tenor trombones that routinely ship with a semitone trill valve like this. Now the other elephant in the room besides myself is the fact that this is a piston valve and not the rotary valves that we are used to seeing. Believe it or not it wasn't uncommon to see piston valves on trombones. Uh, they are however particularly uncomfortable. I find this with my adult grown up hands very uncomfortable to play. I have to be very careful about the uh, skin on my little finger as it is because the likelihood of it getting jammed uh, in between the slide and causing me to cry like a baby is quite high as it is. So I'm concentrating a lot on that and then trying to wrap my hands around this valve and sort of articulate it is very, very uncomfortable. Now my research has led me to believe that other piston valves on other trombones from other makers uh, were at a much different angle or, or canted over slightly to make them a, lot, a little bit more conducive to playing smoothly. Uh, that isn't the case with this one, uh, which is a bit of a shame. So you've got your lovely uh, Excelsior Sonoris trombone and you think to yourself, well I don't actually need a trill valve for this particular piece or gig or whatever you're going to. And so you think, right, can I play this instrument without that particular attachment? And so being the enterprising person you are, you take your trill valve off, you put it aside, you get your bell section and Oh no, it is all wobbly and loosey-goosey. 
you can't play this instrument without its trill valve. The second dilemma is that you've just removed a decent section of tubing out of the instrument, which is going to render the rest of it very, very sharp. However, that has been solved by a previous owner of this trombone, not by getting a simple length of metal with the correct uh, diameter fits at each end, but no, instead they have provided a second slide. They've taken the most complicated bit of the instrument and duplicated it, made it slightly longer so that problem is solved. And then with this second slide you can play the instrument perfectly in tune for the time and go on your merry way. Now this slide uh, is a little bit different. Firstly, it is not made by Hawks and Son. It is actually stamped with Boozy & Co on the back of it. So it's a different slide from a different instrument. It also has a slide lock, that sort of luxury thing that people don't appreciate as much anymore. Uh, but it has the same metal stampings on these uh, decorative sections. It has a similar arrangement on the end of the slide and somebody has added the second brace there for a unknown reason. So inside the case you fit a bell section, a trill valve, two slides and a mouthpiece. A complete kit for all of your musical needs. So if you have been spending this coronavirus time in lockdown thinking you need something new in your life, perhaps it was this video on the trombone with the trill valve. If not, then I hope you find your happiness somewhere else. Watch some of my other videos perhaps. Thank you very much for watching.